But first, I'm very happy to have the honor here to have Lisa van Ginneke, member of Dutch Parliament for the Day SSS party. Also in the Parliament, you're a member of the Committee of Digital Affairs. Um, and I would like to hand out the first copy of you of the game. Um, Thank you. I hope you enjoy it, and I would like to invite you to tell us a bit about this co member, this committee of digital affairs. What is it doing in Dutch Parliament, and how, in general, you feel about our digital agency? Because basically, this card game and the code project in general that Impact is doing wants to address the lack of agency we have over the digital devices and platforms that we're using. Uh, please share that with us, Lisa Pagin. Thank you, uh, thank you, Arjon. Um, I'm very honored to have been handed out the first copy of the Turning Tables game. Uh, so I was just saying I'm inviting all of you tonight to come to my house and play it. Um, <laughs> well, no, not really, but I'm very happy that uh, this game uh, has seen the light. I think it's an important uh, a topic to be discussing about and very important to, uh, very useful to be able to do it in a fun and playful way. So thank you very much for this. Um, well, now your question about the Digital Affairs Committee. Um, since one and a half year here in Dutch Parliament, we have a specialized uh, uh, a parliamentary committee focusing on digital uh, affairs and how to deal with them um, through politics. Uh, and I'm one of the members of, uh, of that committee and I'm very uh, um, honored to be able to try to make a, a change in the way uh, digital affairs shape our uh, yeah, our, our lives, in fact. Um, because I remember when I was, uh, well, it was in the 80s, I, uh, that was my first encounter with tech. And my first encounter with tech was uh, through the Commodore 64. Uh, and I uh, got hooked on it, uh, uh, at first only playing games. So that was really fun. And uh, quickly I started uh, developing games and selling games, which was also fun. And then in the 90s, I started to work as an IT professional. And then uh, it, it was the first moment I realized that uh, tech is not only fun. It can also be very disruptive, uh, disruptive for business processes, disruptive for markets. And that uh, uh, disruptiveness can be a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. So um, um, since then, we've seen a huge shift in uh, power uh, in our society, in power uh, in markets. Uh, so the game changers uh, 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 that's, that, that started the change have now become sometimes very large, very dominant uh, uh, tech companies, uh, grown uh, this large by uh, means of the winner takes all strategy. And uh, that not only changed the way we as uh, uh, consumers, as civilians, do transactions, it not only changed the way um, we buy a book, we buy shoes, we book a trip, um, but it also uh, shapes the way we consume media, we get information, and it shapes the way we have a public debate about how we want our society to be and uh, what political priorities should be. Um, because this public debate um, is carried out through big social media platforms. Um, and uh, we have handed the responsibility to facilitate this public debate to large uh, commercial companies. And um, we did that in a very uh, simple way. They offered us free service. We offered them data about ourselves and about our behavior. So we perceive it as a free service, but it's not free because we give up, uh, uh, in fact, a lot of uh, agency and, fr and freedom. Um, so by paying with our data, we uh, poke up the furnace of, um, 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 of profit by polarization. That's what's happening because these platforms stimulate polarization because polarization gets and keeps our attention so we stay hooked on the platforms and they uh, get larger profits because of advertisement. Um, and the data they collect about us is not only used to track us but also to nudge us. These platforms influence us so we also hand over a bit of our free will in, in, in a way and that's very dangerous. Commercially owned, intransparent uh, algorithms 
uh, determine our future. And I, uh, um, uh, I think that's a very, very dangerous uh, dynamic where we are in. And you might say, well, uh, where's the government in this uh, whole uh, scheme? Well, that's a fair question. Uh, the governments all over the world have been naive or opportunistic or at best uh, amb ambivalent towards uh, this whole dynamic. And um, some are, still are a bit. And I'm, uh, 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 governments themselves have a very strong belief that collecting data solves also all kinds of uh, uh, public uh, 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 and political issues. And it's true, it, it, can, it can have that effect. But uh, 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 it creates problems as well. Loss of privacy, discrimination by uh, uh, algorithms, loss of control, loss of self-determination, all because of the fact that others collect data about us. Um, luckily, a lot of us have uh, seen this dynamic and we, uh, we've woken up. Um, but the big question is how do we regain democratic control on our public values? Uh, it's a simple question and not so simple answer. Um, but luckily the European Union shows uh, the way or at least a way by regulating the big tech companies. And uh, this regulation not only has uh, effect and impact on the, in the European Union but worldwide because uh, also outside of the European Union, a lot of countries are adopting um, uh, privacy laws uh, uh, modeled uh, uh, on the European GDPR, for instance. And also uh, regulatory uh, acts like uh, the DMA and the DSA that try to regulate uh, big tech companies um, will influence the way those companies operate worldwide. So it's very important that we have uh, this European regulation um, but it's a long and it's a tedious road. And um, so we are in desperate need of new game changers and not the tech game changers, uh, game changers of the early days, but public value game changers. Like for instance, uh, Lina Khan or Frances Hogan. Um, I, I saw Frances Hogan uh, in the clip, so she's in the game. I think it's great that a lot of those uh, uh, game changers uh, are portrayed in the game, are uh, maybe even celebrated in the game. So it's time to, uh, to empower them and uh, change tables because changing the tables on tech and playing this game, I think it will bring back the fun of tech I experienced back in the 80s. Thank you very much. Um, we had an extensive interview with you that can be seen on the a uh, YouTube channel of the Impact. But the question I have is maybe, do you see the Dutch Parliament as being on the forefront when it comes to dealing with these digital issues? We have this committee, or are there other countries that you see are further ahead of us? Um, well, um, I think uh, here in the Netherlands we have a deep uh, felt sense of uh, uh, that uh, st stuff needs to change mm -hmm. and we try to uh, be at the forefront uh, in Europe, but it's difficult um, uh, because um, making change in Europe means um, uh, agreeing among mm -hmm. 27 countries, so uh, it's, it's difficult. But um, we see, for instance, Germany mm -hmm. speaking up against any uh, uh, diminishing of encryption, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, we had a debate with our minister of uh, 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 sub-minister of justice, mm -hmm. and I asked him the question: mm -hmm. Will you speak up just as clearly <laughs> as the justice minister in Germany yeah. about uh, not touching end-to-end uh, -end encryption? Mm -hmm. And he said, "Well, we don't want end-to-end uh, -end encryption changed, but we also need to take." into account uh, that we uh, need to police, for instance, uh, child abuse and mm -hmm. all uh, very sensible stuff to uh, take into account. But um, as a, a former technician, I know that you can track uh, uh, child porn yeah. without uh, diminishing end-to-end -end encryption. Yeah. So we need to look for those smart solutions that uh, uh, on one hand create uh, safety in our society and on the other hand uh, uh, um, uh, reinstates or uh, 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 respects digital human rights because there is no difference. There should not be any difference between digital human rights and non-digital human rights. It's the same human rights. And that's uh, one thing I advocate for in, uh, in our parliament. Yeah.
Thank you. Are you as annoyed as we are with big tech? Do you agree that we need to turn big tech into fair tech? Then join us in playing turning tables. It's time to play a new game. Like a normal card deck, turning tables has got aces, kings, queens and jacks. But instead of the power structures of medieval times the cards and turning tables represent the power structures of the world we live in today. The top end of the turning tables card deck shows the people who currently have the money and the power in our world. But turning tables also shows you the other side of the world of big tech. The cards with a value of 2, 3, and 4 are a different kind of picture card, they show other people who work for big tech. With turning tables you can turn the big tech world upside down. You can help a worker in an Indian iPhone factory to beat Mark Zuckerberg, or a Czech Amazon warehouse worker suffering from work-related illness to trump Jeff Bezos. The turning tables deck contains 12 joker cards. These jokers are the inspiring critics and whistleblowers helping us to imagine a world where big tech turns into fair tech and hardworking, underpaid humans have more value than big tech multinationals.